Oh. So let's start that again. So we're calling the meeting to order at 702. <laughs> and the first order is to approve the minutes from the April meeting. April meeting, yeah. So do I have anyone? I'll move to approve the minutes. Okay. okay, thank you. A second? A second. All those in favor? Okay. In favor. Thank you. I said meeting. in favor. Yes. <laughs> The meeting minutes are now approved. So um, the project timeline, we're at the point now where if you were join if you joined us at the last meeting, we saw their um, rough sketches of what those three parks could look like. Throughout this past month, they continued with the um, they continued with the interviews. Um, and completed most of them. We're still unsure about the um, whether they were able to complete all of them at this point in time. We also still have the survey out. Um, and a big thanks to Michael, who it was you, right? We went through the survey and I did go through this. <laughs> yes, we collated it all into uh, one interesting packet <laughs> to read. So the um, the next steps after this, there's a question about the first Friday in September. Uh, we had an idea because that really would be the last time before um, the major public meeting in October for us to perhaps meet with community members and gather any additional information or ideas that they may have. So we thought of maybe um, going to Station Circle uh, we could catch people coming off the train. We could catch people starting their way into Narberth for first Friday in September. And uh, we were looking for volunteers or people who might be able to help out with that um, with that project. So uh, if you are able to, please let me know. Um, I also wondered, I know that the, um, the folks at the Thursday um, farmers market, they have tables and such. Are those from the borough or are those that they? They're right? Yes. Yeah. So I thought I might ask them if we could borrow their stuff <laughs> to give us something to use for that. So anyway, let me know so that we can then map that out and try to figure out what it should look like. But it really is our an opportunity to reach out to folks who may not have been engaged at all in this whole process. So after that is the October meeting, and that's where we meet uh, with the public again, and we'll have a more refined um, plans for those three parts, taking their uh, taking their thoughts, and then um, November, I think we come back together to finalize what we recommend. And I, I was a little iffy about is it December that it goes before the um, borough council for review, or is that January? Um, it's presented in December, and it's supposed to be approved in January. Okay, Hopefully. thank you. I knew there was something with that December and January. Yeah. At the same time, I think as you're working on your budget, Simone Collins is giving you rough ideas of the amount of um, funding that you should maybe uh, work towards for the first year, and then certainly the final plan will have phase two, three, and however many phases we'll need. Mm -hmm. So that's the timeline so far. Are there any questions about that? And welcome to our guests. <laughs> the, the only question that I had was, we just went and the approval for the minutes was the April meeting. Is that right? Yes. D didn't we have a meeting subsequent to that? I thought there was a meeting in July uh, when we had a, presentation by Simone Collins. Yes, and that all of that material is posted in the on the Narber of the Borough um, site under information. Yeah, so Dennis, the way it's working if, is uh, Simone Collins is hosting, you know, some public meetings and committee meetings themselves. So they're the ones that are actually taking the notes for those types of meetings and those are posted on the project page. Anything that's solely committee related, um, which would be like tonight's meeting, um, we were responsible for taking the meeting minutes and approving those. And those are posted on the boards and commissions page where we have uh, the previous minutes listed. Okay, so, so we, we, we don't need to explain my email that went out to the rest of the committee. 
Okay, so we don't need to then approve minutes for the July meeting. Is that correct? No, because it was hosted by Simone Collins, and it wasn't an official meeting of the committee. It was a meeting that was run by Simone Collins, and they posted those minutes, which I haven't, uh, or they, they, they did the minutes and we posted them. Okay. So one of the purposes of this meeting is actually for us to come back together again and look at what was presented and look at what we now learned through the various interviews and the survey and we look at those and talk amongst ourselves about what we think about the, the designs that they've um, presented thus far. Okay. Oh, you know what? Gee, I was, they, they still do need, they have the contacts, but I think they've had trouble contacting those. I can't understand why they would have trouble contacting the business association. I mean, they could just post something on Facebook and Ed Ridgeway would be back. <laughs> it did confirm with me that he got back here in the end. Okay. I'm not sure. It's probably just yeah. the timing of when they said these were yeah. the outstanding issues. But I think it's still New Horizons that they've had trouble with Rich or getting in touch with Rich Stein. But we will follow. Oh, I get them a different contact for yeah. New Horizons. So I'll, I'll follow up with Anita just to make sure that they got those. So um, they did say that most of these interviews would take place in August. Ooh, Dennis is there. Hi, Dennis. So those would be taking place through the end of August into early September. So did everyone have an opportunity to look at the um, the survey results? I it's have. Kind of um, Dennis, since you might be leaving, do you want to give us a sense of, of your thoughts about what you read? Um, I, I guess I'd say in looking at uh, the initial drawings and then the stakeholder interviews to date, um, my sense is that we've moved fairly quickly to some level or type of skate park. Now, there's obviously been no decision made, but I saw it just seemed like that was something that uh, the initial concept drawing, again, draft, and then the stakeholder meeting. So I had, uh, I guess I have some concern about moving too quickly to eliminate a tennis court or pickleball. That may be the right thing to do. It may already may not be, but I don't know that I would rule it out personally myself. I had another concern when I read the Lower Marion Township, uh, I guess I call it the skate park, uh, uh, stakeholder key person interviews, uh, the survey or, or that that summary from Simone Collins and looking at who participated in it, it was all Lower Marion residents and or Lower Marion public officials. And they made mention in there of encouraging a skate park. Uh, there was mention, I believe, in that one or one of the other stakeholder interviews that if there was to be a skate park, you need to be at least 18,000 square feet as opposed to say the 12,000 square foot that was in the concept drawing, which from the Simone Collins uh, uh, information would seem to indicate at least slightly bigger than our current ten tennis courts uh, um, or uh, um, temporary skate park, uh, maybe about the same, but I think maybe a little bit more. But I had some concerns with Lower Marion. They're telling us they think it's a great idea. They want to put up some money, but they don't want it to be public too much right now. They're still unclear. This was in the stakeholder information from Lower Marion. And they told us they've been kind of working on this for three years to get a skate park, but there's no place to put a skate park in Lower Marion. I find that very difficult to believe, number one. I'd like to know more about why there is no 
available place in all of Lower Marion Township for this skate park that Lower Marion is willing to put up money to have it built in Narberth. Um, that may be the right thing to do. It may be great. And if Narberth is going to do that, it's good always to have some other money. But, but my thinking is, and again, it's just my thinking on this, I can't believe there isn't a physical place in Lower Marion to put a skate park that they think is really worthwhile, number one. So I'd like to know why they say it can't be done in Lower Marion. And I would note that I have seen signs by Belmont Hills Pool that say no skate park, no skate park. So is the reason they can't find a place to put it in Lower Marion Township because it's not received by the residents. And I'd like to know if that's the case, why is that so? And then therefore, why is it good to have it in Lower Marion? Um, and I, and I, the other thing is, uh, again, my take on the information that's been gathered so far uh, and I re remember reading this, was that they recognize that Lower Marion, I mean, I'm sorry, that Narberth provides the regional place for basketball to be played, the regional place for baseball to be played. And now the, the thinking is it should be the regional place is all for, for skateboard. So I, I mean, skate, yeah, the skateboard park. So I, I, that whole thing I think needs to be explored a bit more. Um, in terms of the survey results, uh, it seems that um, there's so many good things that people like about our parks, but the maintenance and the upkeep uh, is, is a concern. Uh, and that if you're looking at a group of people who are serviced least by the, the parks at present, it's the elder residents. So I think that we need to ultimately come up with some kind of something that that is a beneficial thing from a parks and rec standpoint for people that are of older age. It And I've mentioned before pickleball, it doesn't have to be pickleball. I'm just saying I don't think we want to eliminate those kinds of things at this point in time. And I think we need more information, uh, particularly like it, it was a strong. And again, I know we got something today from uh, a representative of a, a group, I think. Then um, that individual was part of the stakeholder survey as well. But that's a Laura Marion person. And I, I personally don't know why it is that something that is so needed, as the Laura Marion folks indicate, but their property and their park system and everything else has much more space than Narberth. Why it is it can't be done in in uh, Lower Marion? So, anyway, that's my quick thoughts. All right, thank you. Um, I before, does anyone else want to comment on anything? I read. I, I thought that again. Thank you, Michael. So I think you uh, captured them all very well in terms of the features that people were looking for in the parks. And getting to what Dennis was saying, uh, the need for um, green space, nature, walking trails. I thought the walking trails and exercise um, opportunities came through really very strongly in the um, survey. But as did skate park, as did play, uh, the playground, I thought was the overwhelming. Um, we've got to do more with that. Um, but I don't want to, does anyone else want to comment about what they read in the surveys? Yeah, I mean, I just want to echo that. I think all of those things were priorities. And I do want to mention with the skate park, it, if, if through the survey and through the stakeholder interviews and um, that is decided for Narber as a priority, I think Laura Marion could be an excellent partner to do this with because it helps move things along and it also helps us financially. Um, and there's a benefit with Boss Municipal Grants um, that uh, there's an opportunity there too. I think there are organizations out there that help fund the skate parks as well. Right. Do what's happened too. 
I also the and I forgot about this until very recently because I wasn't I didn't have to go on looking for this. I was helping clean up the room back here, which has a bunch of like historic materials. And I had stumbled on at the time a letter from 1995. Did you send that to me? Yeah. Uh, of uh, some kids asking, <laughs> writing to Mayor Sharkey, Dennis Sharkey, asking for a skate park. Yeah, they're asking for their response. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was, and I, I had completely forgotten that. I was like walking over here and I was like, ah, that's more like on my computer. Um, so yeah, that's just a historical. In terms of the survey feedback, um, one of the things that really jumped out to me was that a lot of the, a lot of the things folks wanted on like maintenance level or, or even some things that maybe didn't exist that they were like were like like bread and butter type items so like the bathrooms were like oh, bathrooms come up again and again and again and the the safety around it and the, the yeah the playground yeah there were and, those types of issues yeah it's like the, the ability to i the way i kind of conceived it was like the ability to come into space at any point in day and then like stay there right like if you have to use the bathroom and you have to leave to go somewhere else and i want to also state for the record that um jeff and his team does an excellent job on it's an old everything. <laughs> so, like, yeah, this, these are not complaints about about the the. the I think like the existing bathrooms, they're you know they are what they are, and they they've been in that layout that they are when I was a kid. I'm sure before that. So that's not a knock on maintenance. I think it's just that's what they are, um, the current ones. But and there was that, and then folks. Um, bring up the concept again from years ago of like having some sort of access to concessions or a cafe area where if you need a snack or if you food trucks or something that something. would provide that and the ability to spend the day like as you said spend the day there are places to sit places, uh, places to just contemplate the nature or contemplate what's going on around you yeah I thought it was nice I've actually never been to a, a baseball game here but apparently there were a number of people who actually go and, and watch the baseball games. I have a question about that. Somebody said that it can't be used for softball because of the mound. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Any softball? I, I, softball I, I think that the softball tends to use an all dirt infield. And I don't think that the, uh, pitcher's mound is elevated to the same extent or even at all with regard to the, that the baseball st uh, uh, mound area. So you'd have to, to use the same fields, you'd have to almost redo the mound each time you're either going to have the softball or the, the hardball. I, I think that's... I'm oh, sorry. I was that little kid. I was that younger that, that they only play softball. I didn't realize that we have junior baseball with the hard balls and such up and up stadium. Women's, <laughs> women's softball is pretty big. Women's yeah. softball girl and, and the high school girls and yeah. That's interesting. Do the girls play baseball then at Harbor at, at the high schools and such? Or the girls predominantly softball because then you get to that equity thing yeah. about the ability to have a field that can be used by both genders in a game that they both want to play. Someone did make a comment in there that there was that a lot of the facilities are geared towards boys. Boys, <laughs> that yes, and that there weren't a ton of yeah so that that was something that kind of struck me the other thing i was interested in and I, it was maybe a few comments uh, about other parks where there and i think that simone collins talked a little bit about this like multi-use spaces so that you can turn it into one type of activity area and then turn it into another based on maybe time of day or what's happening. And I don't know if we ever really explored that in terms of the design that, that Sloney Collins is showing us about which of those spaces could be used like that so that 
you know, when you think about it, the, the baseball or the basketball is played predominantly, I think, in the evening time, which makes sense. It's so hot. Um, I don't think the skateboard, you know, the skateboard would be pretty. I don't think you can turn that into something else. <laughs> You'd have to move all those things. But like the baseball field, you know, all those different fields, it could look off. there's a way of designing the parks that part particularly in a way that it could be used in a multidisciplinary or a multi-sport type of activity. Yeah. There's also like I've seen like places where, because we have the library right here, right? Yeah. So um, even if you have this kind of like a stock of like long games, like there's Cornhole, it lives in the library or in the room, you can go and you can Give me your ID and pull it out. I didn't even know you could do that. See? Well, I don't think you can do that now. Oh, But yeah. what I'm saying is, like, there's, yes. like, options for, like, flex space, like, what you're talking about is you could have activations, just kind of, like, low-level activations that you could do. Yeah. And that would be a way to, like, use that type of, like, uh, flex space. The Station Square design is has kind of that concept of a flexible public civic space that can be used for whether it's, like, a live music or whether it's just table set up or you know so i think it kind of draws on that bit. yeah it does draw on that a little bit there might be certain things that depending on traffic and so you know they may not want you playing with like a anything that could fit a car <laughs> <laughs> well, i think it would be good idea if because i don't think any of the concepts that Simone Collins mentioned involves something that can be switched over uh, in some way to use it in a multi way, which I think would be worth looking into. I, I don't know how that would work out with playing fields, but I think that there's some interest in a community gathering place. Um, so yeah. I, I, I don't know exactly how that would could be accomplished, but it would probably be worth inquiring about that a little bit more. And I thought one of their iterations actually did have right next to what would have been the skate park, um, a block of area that could be multi-use. Like, I think they called it like an activity area or something like that. Um, in, the, in the first phase of what they were showing, and then I think they further down in the presentation, they didn't really show that again. But I think in one iteration, it did have a, um, an activity area. Ooh, there's somebody else who wants to join. Hi, welcome. So, um, so we'll look into that. Yeah, I wanted to talk about the Ellen Grove Park. Um, yeah. Michael, you had mentioned this, that there was like a flip of the survey comments in terms of what kind of park they envision. I think the question specifically was, uh, let's see, um, the above images are examples of a range of different types of parks and amenities. Please rank and order images that best corresponds to your vision for Ellen Grove Park. Um, with one being your top choice. And um, the top three, number one was natural play elements, number two was safe stream access and play, and number three was pickling fruit. And I, I do feel like, uh, number one, the natural play elements really can be played up for that space on the road park. Um, and uh, the picnic road also, I think it can be expanded a little bit because I think that would be used as well. Um, and I, I, I like the safe stream access um, and maybe that can be like, expanded upon as well. Yeah, the, it seemed when I was looking at that with that in mind, the, one of the big things that jumped out to me about the difference between concept one and concept two, I really love the, uh, the look that, huh? um, the internet tab, the internet browser tab. Oh, it's right here. Right here. Oh, okay. Here, for my fingers. Yeah. Take like that. And scroll down. Um, so, if you scroll the concept two, 
for Elm Grove, which is like age. Yeah, you know it's age. Um, I think that's it. Oh yeah, it's this. So I really like the the fact that they well they they kind of like turn the trail more so it's just they merged with the sidewalk. And then they had like this landscape buffer that kind of protects you from the roadway. So I think it probably is going to serve as both like physical comfort and also I would assume that there's some sort of like sound buffering purpose. Yeah. And and then the to me, and there are other elements of this I did like, but to, to the point to Gene's point, in the first version, you go, I guess, uh, um, yeah, yeah. The way it was handled here, right? They have like a sidewalk, and then they have this trail that runs parallel to it. And to me, it was like all the space between that probably becomes just dead space. Like, I don't imagine that anything that. Is that um, the part that's to the left of the yellow. What yeah, are you saying? It it like, so this, I I believe this would be under this would remain like sidewalk. Okay. That edge, and then you have the trail kind of cuts in, but you have this area in the middle. Oh, I thought they were putting uh, trees and things like that to provide a barrier. But uh, I could be wrong. I guess yeah, it looks like they might have them there. Well, that then, interestingly, also, we're, we're just already, kind of like forsaking the pedestrians on the other side of the street at that point. Because there's already trees, aren't there, that, that have been planted along, a few of them that are along Winwood Road? I think so. Yeah. So yeah. probably it's just maintaining what's there and building around, and building it, around it. Well, concept two does have four stream trees along Winwood Road. Yeah, I, I do like that concept just because it number one adds traffic calming benefits, and number two, it so this is over some of that noise. Yes, that's concept. yeah. And then that creates and now I like the I had more so issues with the fact that the entrances exist in the middle of the block. I feel like no one's going to walk down the sidewalk, and they're, they're going to do desire paths and come straight ahead. But if you kind of like combine those two when you have this go along and then you created a larger curve that allowed access in and out, you would then free up that area. You get, get at what Gene was talking about, where you actually have a bigger picnic grove in the middle and you provide kind of better access throughout. So where did you have the curve for the coming into the park? That's what you're saying, right? Is it's just that one entry there? Are you looking at a broader... So just like, I guess like if you can kind of combine this with the other one a little bit, because in this one, in the other one, right, it kind of comes in here and it moves yeah. down. And I guess what I'm saying is rather than having all this stuff in the middle, if it was, if you conceptualize it more as just like a bigger loop where the sidewalk exists as is, and then you have that. that the other one that goes off, like, almost like a feet, this is the sidewalk. And then another one that goes off into the park. And it could, yeah, and then that provides your stream access. You still yeah. have the path so that it's more accessible to folks, but then you open up the middle area for a, for a, you know the lawn of it, and you can provide play areas and things like that. It just seemed like the more I looked at these, the more I realized, like in actuality, if these were true loops, you're just going to be walking. It's like it's not like it's not it's like not a big space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty small. And so once I like. Sat on that, I was like, I don't know how much value there is in having something where you're just walking around in circles. I don't know how many people are going to use that. So you're, you just want a combination of the two, where it's like you have that nice buffer, but you also have multiple access points and a longer trail sidewalk, right? It's like... Get rid of the little loops in the middle and just have one that goes in around, right? And then... That's what I was thinking. And if the starting place for that, rather, like, I guess the way I would explain the folks was from like the higher level view, which is creating the bigger kind of like picnic growth area and creating better comfort, which they already have there in terms of buffering. Right. Um, and then having the access points at the entrance ways rather than in the middle of the yeah. yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. It's like you need them both along the where the stream is if you're going to have the, the play that's water pipe and then along the windward, but then you're going to need one kind of like in the middle. So it is big enough to, and then maybe one side of it is the picnic area. 
it's just something where it's more than just these two um, pathways. There's also one through the middle to get towards the picnic and everything would be, right? I mean, you, you, you have, have to get kind of like offshoots. I would yeah. imagine that most people aren't going to be entering from the middle because there's no, because that like you're it's on a natural, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. think yeah. that's just, realistic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were yeah. entering from there and on either end. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. The entries can't. They either when you first come through the tunnel or from Elmwood Avenue. I don't think people are going to go there with the idea of entering in the in the midpoint of the park. So. And what's the uh, Jeff? Do you know what the cartway is under the in the tunnel with the driveway? Yeah, it was here. I guess the river was in the tunnel. This is like, is it like it, it exactly what it would need to be? I guess my question, the question was, is there any, is there any way to like reach it over slightly and then put some sort of like those flex protected posts along the? There's edge? not. There's not much room to give yeah. in there, you know, to kind of shift traffic one way or the other. You know, it's tight now. You know, when there's two cars or a shopping okay, trucks. Well, one of the ideas that came up in several of the KPIs was making that a signalized one, um, so it signalized to only allow one direction. Yeah. Um, and that would be, that would make it possible for you to widen the cycle there and improve the safety and control the traffic better there, and make it safer for both pedestrians and bicyclists. Which, yeah. which I think would be a great idea, but I except for the fact that then the only way to get into Narvith is off Montgomery. Let's say it's one way exiting. Um, then the only way to get into Narvith, especially so with the tunnel. Ways. So it's both ways, but it will be signalized to allow only one direction at a time. Well, the, yeah. the signal would control the entry and the exit. So it would turn it into a one lane. However, it will go in both directions. Um, it would just be signalized to allow one direction versus the other. Uh, the, 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 um, it would be interesting in terms of the, I don't know, is it common, the one that comes right out and um, in front, next to where the um, baseball field is, and you take a left to go through the tunnel. It's the road right, right out here. Stafford. That's Stafford? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So would that, that doesn't seem like <laughs> would that require a traffic study then though? It's I mean, people it's, taking a left. It seems that like hard. that intersection is a nightmare as it is yeah. to have that turn into a one way. You know, yeah. especially about developing arbor, I, I think that would get even worse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, um, it would actually. Well, yeah, there would there would have to be a traffic study, yeah. and there was also talk about and kind of reversing the directions of Haverford Avenue and Windsor, which would yeah. solve. Oh yeah, issues. I kind of look at this discussion now as being separate from yeah, the best yeah, plan. Yeah, but yeah. so <laughs> I just want to keep us focused on these concept plans because that's the feedback yes. on that, not yeah. the tunnel. You know, yeah. um, that's all. I'm sorry. So, was there? I feel like I have a vague memory at one point of, of asking neighbors for a right of way. To get to this park, or am I making that up? Like through their property? But they still have. Like, uh, we we tried to see if there was like a like some sort of tunnel or culvert or like, but yeah. it didn't seem like there were ever any easements or this. Yeah, that was what I was looking yeah. for. Yeah, okay. it would have required getting multiple easements. Yeah, that's what I, I thought. There was some vague memory of talking about that. I'm just curious. Okay. Yes, they right pretty much on. said we can't take that. Every, there were a few comments about that tunnel and turning into a pedestrian tunnel. And we already know that that's not feasible from the last. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. So, any other thoughts about El Grove? We all want to get on that, that uh, maybe looking at the Windward Road. My, my only other question was do we know if there's any difference in terms of like, MS4 between one and two in terms of credits. But I noticed that the riparian area was different. 
in the, or I guess one of them had in wet meadow and one of them had a constructed wetland. I don't think they have those details yet because they would have to provide some kind of like stormwater calculations to figure out how much sediment it would capture and everything. So like at this point, I don't have enough information to really like comment on the, like that particular issue, I guess. They would have to explore that further. I think Anita, um, that's like part of her background is like, she's an engineer and she's heavily involved in MS4 um, permitting program, so I feel like she she'll probably look into that. So we can figure that out. Yeah, and then the and then Jeff, like, what are, can you give me a sense of like the maintenance needs for like a boardwalk versus just I guess the trail? You know, it all depends on what the trail is. You know, if it's you know a naturalized you know trail, would it be you know ship or yeah, it wants to your touch up if it's on the board, you know, as well, you know, probably once every 10 years, you know, patch it up from sort of being this wise in there, you know, nothing really, you know, to plant that entire area as like a meadow or natural area, you know, when you get to that and you start talking about, you know, once a year, come back. Um, you know, so it's very simple, you know, it just would need to be known that, you know, those types of plantings take three to five years before they're easy on the eyes, you know, so the first few years are a bit rough. Um, should I just say, you know, it's important, you know, to mention that as we go down this road here. We may have to install some kind of protective fencing probably around it, too, so it's like... I've seen that in like some parks, you know, where they have the tensing around a riparian zone until it's like, I guess, I don't know, maybe in, in the growing stages, establishing. No, I think yeah. I think it's a good opportunity to put signs up, you know, to learn what people are doing, you know, to kind of try to educate. Yeah. So, So what I have for Elm Grove, um, we want to stick with um, natural play areas, picnic grove, um, mm -hmm. safe stream, get rid of the, that middle opening that we talked about to allow for more of the picnic area. Um, we need to know what the trail construction is and um, what that might look like from a maintenance perspective. Um, and we talked a lot about the Linwood Road and the tunnel. <laughs> We were told we can't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just, just to confirm, too, like this concept idea that has like the 10 foot wide section of, we call it green bird, with straight trees. <clears throat> Do we like that as part of the plan, too? Yeah. It's like a sound buffer. Yeah, that's the buffer. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I do, too. So it's like a 10 foot sidewalk, and then it's yeah. 20 feet, really. It's, it's the yeah. bird. Well, the verge would happen before the sidewalk, right? The verge is between the, verge the road, and the, the verge, the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be the ver the verge would be 10 feet, obviously, but then the sidewalk would be another 10 feet? Yeah. Yeah, that's what's showing here. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm also wondering if the, the stream is being widened. I don't remember from the presentation whether that was a very I don't think they talked about widening the stream. There was a lot of debate about if anything we do, what do you do about the neighbors who own the other part of this the stream? Because it, I mean, I know that we're naturalizing the stream, but it, is that ma making a significant amount here? And would that help with the water storage? And so we can ask that. I don't remember that coming up in terms of, do you, does anyone else, in terms of widening the, the, the stream? Maybe just by naturalizing it, it just does that because you're going away from a wall like that and you're, it's not, yeah. I mean, I think, right? yeah. Yeah. We didn't talk specifically about widening during the last one, but obviously visually we can see that it was widened for these 
for these concepts, but uh, we'll have to follow up with Anita on that. But we did ask, well, we can do all this great work on one side, but then the the resident who sold us this land, they would be responsible for taking down that wall and naturalizing it. And they probably wouldn't want to have that expense. So how do we address that? And that's an open question that we still don't have an answer for. Can one half, and I don't, can one half be naturalized and then the other half remain the, the wall? Because with this property there, I just don't think, you know, there's enough actual space to take that wall in. Well, it's, it's great. You know, he has a swimming pool right there. How high is the wall? Like, well, to my waist, yeah, so three and a half feet or so. Um, it, it's, it, it, it will require a lot of earthwork to take it down on his side because then he will have to pull back on our side. So we will kind of have to re, you know, shape that channel in there. And so I believe that our, our side is the only option to take down. Gotcha. Because then it does, this is a rabbit hole point that we can table, but by us opening up our side and cutting the cement underneath would then expose his half to more potential erosion. And then he could potentially make a claim, well, you cut off, you cut that channel in half and it made the cement and the wall on my side erode faster. And then now I have to pay to fix it because if that wall crumbled right now on his side he would have to pay for it right um if it crumbled on our side we'd have to pay for it so that's something that needs to be addressed because we cut that cement down the middle that's on for those walls then does it potentially weaken that cement on his side and then make his walls crumble faster so well, that's that's a, the purpose of shaping our hill back. You know, we wouldn't just drop that wall on our side of the stream. It would be pulled back, you know, a substantial width to allow for that water volume you know, once it comes through that culvert to ride up our, our general slope. So not all that force and pressure will go to his side. So this design goal, it actually ends up in his benefit. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. Don't think this has the um, does this have any um government circle or switching this to the end? Oh, here, this is the iteration I was talking about. They have this area called gaming. I think it's called games, that big square. Um, so I think that one showed a way of... Um, That's my nice area. Does anyone... You know, one thing we didn't talk about, um, the football and soccer. I don't know how often they're used for either of those sports. And there was I, the only reason I, there were there were one or two comments in the survey about how um, you know football is not played by many people. Maybe soccer is. Um, so if we're looking at field use, I I don't I don't know. <laughs> That's a great point. Yeah. Um, football is played by St. Margaret's in the fall yeah. for three months. Right. I I was out guard. Oh, I, mean, I don't seem like it because I was not good at it. It's more football than I played. I think one of the folks on Zoom, um, Eva, did you have a comment you wanted to? Yeah, I was just. Um, the, um, the reason I joined this call is because I. Um, I feel very strongly about Narberth Park. So um, the uh, the football is used by so many kids, like for the CYO program, and that's what helps feed some of the high school programs. And then um, 
I think Narvish soccer uses soccer, but the baseball field is heavily, heavily, heavily used. And I, I was like sent something by a neighbor that said, you guys are considering um, making the baseball field like smaller, but that would be, uh, that would be a tremendous uh, disappointment. Oh, Eva, we, that was just one of three concepts that said, could we better utilize the space by re making a smaller baseball field? That was just, it wasn't something that anybody said was going to happen. So that's just people getting excited about rumors. It's one of three concepts that said, could we look at re utilize it or utilizing the space by reducing the size of that baseball field and making a smaller baseball field? Nobody, no decision was made. Okay. So I just, cause I won't be able to join all these meetings, but since I'm here, I'll just, and people don't always know how much it's being used, you know, on the committee. Um, like there's Legion baseball, there's CYO baseball, and there's um, Delco league baseball. Um, and the Delco league guys, that's like a semi-pro team. Like we can't, and, and that's, that's a huge tradition. Like, and my sons still play and they're um, 17, 18, 19 now. So like the the baseball field gets used by older kids a lot, just so people know that. Yeah, we, we appreciate that. Thank you. And the and it was also I think Serena Collins talked to the Delco League folks as yeah. well. Yeah. So we got some of their thoughts typed up and were provided to the, to the committee as well. Awesome. One of the interesting things that came out of that interview with Delco League was that um, really Narborough has the only 90 foot baseball field yeah. in the entire area. Yeah, that was um, interesting. And because Lower Marion Township doesn't allow um, non township residents to use their fields, um, meaning that the, the Delco League has both Narborough and Lower Marion. It's uh, residents in the team, so that means that's discriminating against the number of kids. So um, essentially, it's the only 90 foot baseball field that they, they are able to use. Is there a difference between Little League and regular adult baseball? Like who runs? Set, no, 70 versus 90. I thought there was yeah. yeah. Isn't it? So what there is is. Um, in the past, it was just Little League 60, and then you go to 90 when you go to Babe Ruth when you turn 13. However, around the country, they've there's some leagues now that do a smaller field. So you have a, a transition between Little League and the the full size field. So that's was one option that Simone Collins brought up is instead of a 90 foot field, we would do a 60 foot right which is the transition field before you get to babe ruth that was just a concept it was an idea it's not something that is you know that was just right. presented so so, six, so 60 foot would mean that the older kids can't use it and and clearly uh the narberth um baseball league folded a little bit which i still hope it will come back like at some point but the the majority of the kids that use the field right now are older and they need the bigger field. Yeah. We currently don't have any leagues that play on a 70 foot. They're not adjusting the bases on the Babe Ruth field. So that those fields are available throughout lower Marion, Rebecca. Yeah. Thank you. So getting back though to this iteration, we really started this talking about not baseball, but the soccer and football. And I understand either you were mentioning that they the football is used by quite a few people. Yeah, I mean it's it's a big program for the kids in Narberth. Um, it's the St. Margaret's yeah, Westville and, and West Philly too. It's like the only football league around. It's the only football league around. My husband was saying. For those for that community, there's the Caverford and the Chair. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's important to keep these traditions alive, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the list. I wanted to actually bring that up. This St. Margaret, it's St. Margaret's is the team, right? But there's other parishes that don't have their own team. And they send their kids mm -hmm. to join the St. Margaret's football team. And so I right. thought that was 
that was important. I still think about that. I met a bunch of kids that I never would have met otherwise. And they all came together at that field to play St. Martin's football. Now, is that a field that when we talked about multi-use, because I imagine it's only used at certain times, that that could be rethought in turn. Like if there is a way of doing multi-use, that would be one area that you could look at in doing that. And it well, I mean it it naturally is because it's also used for right the baseball. Field and for the soft, like it's all that's all in a given space. Okay. So and and yeah, and, I've, and at any other times, right? It could be other. Yeah, whatever those are. We whatever are. you want to use the field yeah. for, right? All right. Now let's go on to. I would just note, if I could, that one of the uh, stakeholder interviews, Simone Collins did, details the extent to which the is is there i'm it just just pointing that out that we did we did get a, a pretty good uh, interview from the folks who are running the baseball programs good. there's yes. more use now right now than there was the last couple of years but i don't know if that's oh, COVID. Here. <laughs> all right station circle <clears throat> I can't, I have to say, I really spent a lot of time on this one. Um, but we talked about the having the, the right of way for the cars coming in. Um, Actually, before we move on to that, I feel like we need to talk about the, the daylighting of the stream because I know that was a big question. Okay. Um, and whether that's even feasible. Um, I, it seemed like from Simon Collins that it would be like a huge expense to put that in there in terms of engineering and construction. Um, I guess that was just like a better idea of what the feasibility is. Um, from feasibility though, are you talking about it's doable, but it's very, very pricey. Right. So as we balance all of these things we want to do, where does that fall in terms of what the overall... I think we need to do like a, you know, pros and cons. Yeah. It's like there, there's so many. And I mean, obviously, the, there's a huge ecological benefit and stormwater benefit, flood plain management benefit, um, and maybe a study benefit, but then there's downsides too in terms of cost. What do you have to drop in order and, to do that? And loss of athletic fields. So yeah. it's, it's, it's having to weigh all of those things. And I think that has to be a big part of the discussion in September mm -hmm. um, when we meet with them, because I do think that we have to give a direction at that point in terms of that. It, how are we going to balance that? Right. And I don't know if they have any sense of what the cost of doing something like that would be. And if we do it, you know, what do we do then about those fields? Because as we've heard tonight and we've seen in the surveys, maintaining that, um, what Narberth is known for from a parks perspective is really important mm -hmm. to our community. I think it would be helpful from Simone Collins to request something like a, you know, the pros and cons, sure, um, to weigh all of that out so that we as a community can decide. Yeah. And these specific to daylighting to the street. Yeah. I mean, that's a big decision. That we yeah. We were, you know, we've, we've been talking with Eric Johnson, our engineer, and we're like, Eric, just ballpark, what do you think it would cost to do this? And it's like, um, about seven million dollars. <laughs> okay. And, and that's just like him just like saying money. money. So that's we can't do anything else in Narva. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Years that we had <laughs> daylight. So I think there's funding uh, for something like that just because it's a huge uh, like right, but think about how many projects we have currently, you know, we have, we're right. we're working on the capital improvement plan. That's multi-million right there, plus we're trying to do all these different things. It's millions and millions. It's like, how do you get all this? Right. But I think it's important that we have that discussion because that, yeah. that's going to be a big pushback from certain parts of the community if we don't do yeah. it. And we need to be able to address why we're not doing it. Right. I don't yeah. want to look foolish as the borough if we put together these beautiful elaborate plans and then half of it doesn't get implemented because, you know, it's just 
not feasible. Right. I think, um, well, the, the purpose of this process, right, was to get some of these things out there and then we can put price tags on them and then we can have those And do the pros and cons and balancing yeah. of what goes away when we do something. I think yeah, right. so that when we end up at the end of the day, we don't have, like, something we can't implement, but we can explain exactly. on. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. I think, uh, besides monetarily, I think it's worth um, asking um, time estimates as well. So, I mean, that could really affect the timeline. Mm -hmm. Right, that could take out the park while they're right. doing they that. They can redo fields, yeah. all that stuff's done too. So. And then the other thing to... How it can, would seem as some measure of a starting point could be change would there be with if you did this daylighting, how much, you know, upsides or whatever it would take, how much space do you you know, remove for this very good environmental purpose, but that then tells us, you know, in terms of figuring out what what sporting events are still going to be utilized uh, at the Narbeth uh, playground. So I, I, it seems to me that ninety foot Collins could answer without us spending a lot of money. Maybe I'm wrong. And the other thing we have to figure out or try to estimate, and perhaps with the help of our engineer, Alan, is in the future, say things remain the way they are. It remains underground. In the future, that that tunnel is 100 years old, according to Simone Collins. It was built in 1895. Well, what if there's, for the next generation, there's going to be maintenance, most likely. What would that look like? Would they have to dig a hole in and uh, in the park and then suspend sports play during that time to repair a hole? And what would those costs look like? Does that make sense? Yeah, it's anticipating what we know is going to happen. Just because then the cement will crumble age. eventually, and then the next generation will have to take care of it. There was also yeah, uh, uh, there was something that Simone Collins had brought up as a possibility, and I was curious as to how if, if that could be explored further. And that was, you know, having the ninety foot baseball field and the daylighting, and um, the only way you, you could allow that is by removing the the parking lot and re reclaiming that space and um, as green space and then moving some of the all the parking to the streets as back in angle parking um, and that would that would allow that would keep the Narberth Park the interior of Narberth Park a community space and then keep the parking in the perimeter of the park instead of inside the park so I'm, I'm curious as to if that's something that can be explored Sort of like the back and angle parking, which I normally don't like that when you drive in back out, and then you know. But in this case, there's no right, like there's nothing on the other side of the street, so it's not like you're gonna have to worry about you know pedestrians crossing mid block. Right. It seems That's like a, a good use of yeah well, street <laughs> space in that event. <laughs> and. The concept is feasible, but would that concept require seven million dollars? Seven million dollars, and then yeah. several, and then several million to take up the parking lot, move a basketball, move basketball courts, and other things over. Phase four, five, maybe six. Okay. Is it, so like looking at the three concepts for the for this park in particular, I just feel like concept one makes the most sense. What park? Uh, the one that's up or the this is out this is station circle. We've been talking about Narrow Park. Yeah, I'm looking at Narrow Park still because okay. I'm like still on that because I feel like we are really I don't know. I, I just I'm just trying to think if there's anything more guidance you need from us on Narber Park. But well, I'm sorry, I'll shut up. It it sounds like they 
that there is some guidance needed right on the question of the skate park and yeah. so the size of the skate park there that was another item this is showing it at 10,000 square foot and some change but there have been some feedback that they're going to have the skate park it should be 18,000 which i think is that what's that Jeff, do you know how that is? What's the, I thought the current one was 18. I thought the 10 square was 18 as well. No, we're 15, right? 14, 15. Oh. Yeah, I mean, we're not held to make a skate park in the absurd size. You know, it just the small, you know, if it's a smaller park, it just change the ramps that were in there. You know, you, you have to work within the space, you know, that, that we have, you know, to fit. Everything it can be pushed up against the wall to say, you know, the park the you know, skate park needs to be 18,000 square feet. And now we need to shift and be considering talking about the you know, what sport has to suffer, what you know, right? I just, they could be made. I just felt like concept one makes the most sense, it's like the most comparable for everybody, it kind of appeases like all groups. That's what I thought too. It would, you know, you'd be maintaining baseball, you would still allow football and soccer in the middle, you would have more walking paths, you would also have a nice skate park, the basketball courts would remain as is, you'd have new bathroom facilities and a pavilion that's facing the field where it should be, where you have a larger audience. You also would have a new playground that's inclusive and also, um, like an outdoor fitness area, a game court area. So like I feel like it just kind of like hits every single group. And I and and it like and I think it's fair, like like I skate park, I know they say they need 18,000, but if we could provide a beautiful park in around 10, 5, 11, 11, 000 square feet, I think that that I don't know, look at this as like a win-win for everybody. I I agree. I guess I'm not looking at this as like a how about concept one versus two versus three. Like Simone yeah. Collins, when they presented this, came back and said, Hey, why don't you guys tell us what you like about these different things? And then send them back to the troubleshoot and come back to us with whatever like right. needs to be. So the feedback is at least we thought concept one for all demographics, for all age groups. Yeah. It was it was more inclusive of the broader community. Yeah. And I also like the use, even though I haven't brought up the use of the area, the better use of the area, in my opinion, off near the war memorial. Yeah. Because right now it's kind of like it's kind of a dead space over there, honestly. Yeah. And this seems like it activates it a lot more. Just looking at this though too, if you moved the the game area and the outdoor fitness area to where the skate park is, and you swap those, that looks like that would add in some additional square footage to that skate park pretty, pretty easily. I mean, that small that's, little change. Ben, that's a great point because it's exactly what I was going to say. So thank you for bringing it up. Because while the skate park is, uh, is what, 17 now, reducing yeah. it down to 10 would mean you'd exclude certain demographics as in you'd exclude you'd have to choose between features for big kids or little kids then you wouldn't allow so then what are you going to do say well this is a skate park for older kids only because there's no beginner features to have a the larger skate park like ben said in that space does allow you to have the features for different levels because otherwise again it would be pointless to have a skate park for just little kids, toddlers, or big kids, advanced. So that's my two cents. Would, would I be able to say something? Um, has it totally been decided to do the skate park over tennis courts and paddle ball? Because um, um, I may have missed that whole conversation, but when you're talking about like all the demographics that the park hits, but what about older people? There's no, there's no tennis or... Paddleball for pickleball. I'm sorry, pickleball. Yeah, sorry. Well, what wasn't there some discussion regarding the tennis courts and basically one of the reasons that we did put the skate park pilot in that space is because the tennis courts, from my understanding, were not being maintained, were crumbling, and they weren't being used. They they weren't did being used because they were crumbling. There, right. Yeah, there's a huge um, the 
the NAA had money to redo the tennis courts and they, she actually got like two or three quotes, like over a period of like five or six years and she couldn't get the borough to cost share. And that yeah. was just what was holding up. She was just figuring out what, and then all of a sudden they threw the skate park on when we actually, I was, I was kind of like one of the people in the whole discussion about that skate park, which was supposed to be at Sabine. And then they decided um, they got that free equipment and they just dumped it in Narberth without, I don't know. That was my, that's how my, was my take on it. But um, there's a huge, there was like a, um, there's a big controversy over tennis versus the skate park in the community. Um, well, that came in, I thought, a little bit in the this survey. It was clear that the folks for the skate park, they filled out, it was funny, um, well, yeah, August 10th and 11th. Yeah, they were all coming. They were all coming <laughs> in on August 10th and 11th. But if you look previous to that, there were certainly mentions of the skate park, but also mentions of tennis. It was it was pretty interesting. I would say it was almost even in terms of post or pre um, August 10th, the interest in the tennis courts versus um, the skate park. I think the one thing about the skate park is that they are organized. Yes. And they're getting the word out and they are vocal. So, yes. I mean, if the community really wants pickleball and tennis, then we need to have their voices. We, and yeah, and Eva, we're not discounting anything you say. Please, please understand that. But the tennis, there hasn't been the demand. And even after the skate park pilot was put in, there wasn't continued um, discussion to say from tennis and pickleball groups to say, hey, when is this pilot ending? Because we really want tennis back or we, we, we didn't get any of that feedback. So if it is out there, it hasn't been brought to the attention of the Parks and Rec Board our master park planning committee or the borough council so well it did it did come up in the survey dennis and yeah, the only the thing survey, I'll say, before yeah i'm sorry rebecca uh, uh, you know I, I i think that i said this at the outset of the meeting you know that the, the there was i think a pretty quick leap to uh not including at least in the draft pro uh, plans by simone collins tennis and pickleball uh, there is an interest. There was an interest enough that, as Eva mentions, a group, the Norberth uh, Athletic Association, had actually gotten money together to to repave the courts. They weren't getting used. And in fact, we couldn't even do the skate park, the, the, the temporary skate park, until some maintenance of the surface was done. We did that for the startup of the skate park. But when the tennis folks were trying to get resurfacing and had some of the money gathered themselves, the borough itself didn't didn't uh, jump in and make up any of the difference. So I, I, it may be it may be that there hasn't been as vocal a uh, group when it comes to the tennis and pickleball, but they were sufficiently strong enough to to make sure they had some money on the table. And, um, you know, they're a, a presumably a bit older group. Uh, we've got uh, some pretty strong uh, advocates for skate park, which I think is a good thing, but it isn't necessarily the only thing that would be ideal. And that does lead back to this whole idea that if we do a skate park, it's got to be this big, expansive skate park that would be, as as Dennis Callen has just talked about, uh, take care of both young and old. Um, you know, we, we all want everything. And so it is hard and we're doing this. But I don't think it's been a situation where it would be uh, fair to say that the borough residents themselves don't want or haven't expressed an interest in the tennis and pickleball. And I do think that if it isn't, I do think it needs more consideration before we move forward and say, let's work on the proper uh, skateboard park. And again, as I've mentioned before at the outset, and Eva wasn't on it, but Nor Laura Marion itself says that it's been working or trying to work on a skate park for three years and and now they want to offer money to Narberth to do it in Narberth. I'd like to know a little more about what they've done, why it isn't feasible to, to have that park in uh, Lower Marion. And maybe there could be a smaller skate park in Narberth that would accommodate the younger folks. 
And then as they got older, they could move on to a bigger skate park, more expansive skate park in Lower Marion. That might be something to be considered as well. I do want to highlight one point that Simone Collins had mentioned and it really resonated with me. It was that I mean, we have very limited square footage on, in Narberd Park with a lot of different uses. And I think we really have to start thinking about prioritizing um, the greatest community benefit for the greatest number of users. So, you yeah. know, so we have to weigh the number of users that's going to benefit and the number of like, for example, the tennis courts now, where there's three of them, you play doubles. Okay, so that's 12 people. Well, think about how many more skateboarders or people you can have when, when it's a skate park versus tennis courts. 12 versus like 30, 35, whatever. So, I've like, never seen you get a lot more. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we only had two courts, Alan. We didn't have three. Two. No, yeah. there was three. Yeah, also, there were three? You could take tennis. And oh, they only had two nets. That's right. One didn't have nets. But you can't, you, you, can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't fault the fact that Narberth didn't maintain those courts as a strike against the people who want to use them. And you're right. There are times when you don't have, you know, 10, 12 people, whatever it is, out there using those things. But again, I... I I would say that that doesn't mean there isn't the interest for those residents who most likely would be the least served by the park at its present status and with the plans that we're talking about. And so I also think in terms of this, it's really hard because we have limited space and we still don't know what the space will be that will be available in Sabine Park. That's right. So we're planning out just this without, like on its own, without any thought of, you know, if we have to weigh what we can do with these parks, yeah. and you know, the, we, we think these other things are really important from a park's perspective, what's the feasibility then of them taking place at the Sabine area? And I don't think we can do that until the borough has decided what it's going to do. So it makes the decision making for this right. so much more difficult. I agree. And you can another thing that I was kind of thinking as well, which is I would like to see, I would like to know kind of, I kind of think I probably have something of a sense, but <laughs> the other parks that are within call it a 10, 15 minute walk of Narber, right. what amenities exist in those areas as well? Because, yes, we think of it as Narva, because this is the Narva Park coming out. Right. Narva, you know, but I probably didn't know the actual boundaries of the town until a couple of years ago because we experienced the community as a community. So to the extent that there are other things that are within our walk shed that are reasonably accessible from a, from a walking distance, those are also amenities that are accessible are to the parks, though, that are within Well, I can tell, like, the Narva Park's plan, in terms of, like, General Wayne, General General Wayne, Wayne was the like one I can think of. And that was ranked as the number two most used yeah. park. Well, people said right. it. They walked by hours to go to other parks because of the um, condition at this point. Yeah. 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 I, believe, I can speak to that from experience as a tennis ball, as a tennis player and a pickleball player, more tennis than pickleball. So I General General okay. Wayne, General okay. Wayne, South Ardmore Park, and the Wynwood Valley Park over by Penwin Elementary all have tennis and pickleball. They're all within a five minute car ride, ten minute bike ride. Yes, and, not and, not within walking distance. Though. Well, you can walk. If we want to have park. this, this this is the borough. This is the, when when when. Okay. Uh, I, I I still say that the borough residents least served don't have to get in their car and drive if they want to exercise. And we and, and Lower Marion over at General Wayne, that's a huge park underutilized in terms of the big field. And there's no reason that seems to me that there couldn't be a grand and beautiful skate park. I, know he, was gonna, I knew he was going to go that direction. <laughs> so, well, that here's an idea that combines a couple the uh, the the visions here of the three plans is let's look at one of the basketball courts because by the way I live across the street from the park so I see what goes on there every time I leave my house 
And there's a lot of time when basketball is not utilized, i.e. school hours, which is coming up in two weeks. And that basketball court will be a ghost town during the day. So what about on one of the basketball courts, two pickleball overlays? And then during the day, everybody, as you, you know, everybody that wants to play pickleball can first come first serve play pickleball on the basketball courts. That's an yeah, I think Yeah, I think a general discussion with Simone Collins about those multi-use areas is really important because as we are even here, we have disagreements about what's what priorities. So is there a way of looking at that land and thinking about different ways of utilizing space given, as you said, kids, once they go back to school, you're going to see them maybe in the late afternoon and evening. And then when it's you know cold out, you're not going to see them at all, I'm assuming, or not many. Um, so I think that's a, that's a great idea. And I think it's part of that broader discussion about um, multi-use areas. Definitely. And Dennis, you say the older population, do you mean because I don't want to say it if I'm wrong, but do you mean older and retired people? I'm sure that that's some of them, but I think if we looked at the survey, um, whatever the last category noted, in fact, last two categories, I guess, noted were the ones that seemed to be underserved. So that's what I'm referring to. I'm not picking necessarily retired people uh, or, or or am I picking a sport of which I am playing. I, I've played pickleball just a couple of times, so it's not something that is focused uh, on it or an important sport, if you will, to me. It's just that there's a community, it seems to me, and then we've heard from Eva, and again, of course, some of the survey results said this is other things that they would like. So I think your thought that maybe there's an overlay, maybe there's something, These are these are additional thoughts that need to be considered. I do have some personal concern in the idea that Narberth, with the limited space that we have, and I agree it would be ideal if we could encompass Sabine in this discussion, but we can't. But making it, it is the regional place for basketball to be played in the Narberth, Lower Marion area. It is the regional place for baseball to be played. If we make it the regional place for skateboarding, that's potentially a lot of great use. Don't get me wrong. But it also is, does, is, is Narbeth, should Narbeth with our limited space, should we be the host for the, the region? And I, I don't know that that's what the people of Narbeth want. They may. I don't know that. But I, I would say that is something that we, we have parking issues. We have whatever, you know, so I do think, that is uh, an overlay. Maybe that's a good way to address it. But I do think that there there are other areas. It, it does bother me. I don't think you were quite on at the outset, but it bothers me that Laura Marion seems unwilling to acknowledge a responsibility for their residents and want to put it on Narva's table for us to go ahead and take care of that. So just so I think we've captured those ideas um, pretty forcefully, um, and I, but I don't want to leave without talking a little bit about Station Circle and any idea, any thoughts that people have. Um, again, I, I can't say I spent a lot of time looking at this one and I, um, I wish Jim Cornwall was here for this one. Yeah, yeah. this is like the first one he didn't come to. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Having served with Jim on Planning Commission, I can say I really love this entire concept. I do too. I like the whole idea of, but I'm not sure I'm reading it as right. So I'm sure that, so the roadway remains, Haverford Avenue obviously remains uh, with traffic, correct? They have the way for people, I don't see it on this one, is this where, is, is the far right, is that how they would drive through to, how would they get to the parking lot behind their buildings? There's a, an entry point. Further down? Um, it's where the, uh, so 
Right right uh, if we go continue this way. Yeah, so it's where it is, where that one opening is now. Right. It's, it, yes, and it gets slightly Kind of like where Revivals used to be in between. Right. It's next yeah. to it. Yeah. 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 Revivals is going to remain. So this is the egress that's shown on this plan um, as the exit. Okay. Yeah. So that people, uh, they drive out that way. Okay. okay. But I really, this is, I think this is lovely. Yeah, I think the, the ADA access improvement for the train station, that's great. I, I like the loading area. Um, I think that's going to be well, well utilized by all of the businesses there. The employment the for the, the train station. Yeah. And the construct building for the bike, bike lane. So we're all in agreement that this is a nice, good. I think this is a very good plan. I've heard some concerns from the business folks that if you take away that parking, it takes away business for the state store, which is one of the limited draws we have from, you know, except for our restaurants, but one of the limited draws we have for retail. Uh, and I love sweet maple, don't get me wrong. But, you know, so I don't know if there's some way to figure out how to get some additional parking so that, that Norbert doesn't lose that draw, which I think is, you know, we need. I think there's some un, there are some spaces in this vicinity that are not currently, the park is not currently allowed on, on Haverford Avenue that I would recommend we could look at to yeah. regain some of those spaces right in that immediate vicinity. And then additionally, over the long term, um, I noticed that, and this is not something that I don't think we can fix until we uh, switch over the, the way that the, um, the parking metering system works. But if you look, like I just noticed this recently, and now every time I'm downtown, I can't unsee it. Those spaces are so large in terms of the way they're striped that you could probably actually How many find spots there be like a dozen ish. Oh, I mean, I mean, like the, the uh, street, street oh, yeah. but yeah, in terms of uh, the circle, how many circle, are there? It's what is it? Is it in the circle, it's circle, circle itself, like 12. Yeah. Yeah. And 12. I mean, if, oh, if yeah. we're talking about doing that back in parking down in Haverford, I mean, that could right there solve the issue. I also just want to, um, um, as a follow up to what you said about parking on Haverford and the public health and safety committee meeting, we did um, give the okay to look into. Creating more spaces there on Haverford Avenue, uh, which would for parking provide additional parking. Yeah, good. Okay. So, Jane, you're referring this? to from the Citizens Bank down? Correct. On well, the other side of Haverford Avenue. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. That's, That's great. We're the state's part of the state by my visitors. Yes, past, 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 past those spots, past Essex Avenue. It's like, oh, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. That it's that's whole like area right there, but I guess you want to put a space there. Yeah, right up the street. Yeah. Right yeah, yeah, right here. Right here. That would be a lot of extra spots. And I just want I mean, to, that would be a lot of extra spots. One other thing I wanted to mention was I, I talked to the liquor store. Yeah, the liquor store. Uh, <laughs> and I asked them, you know, how has it been with the farmer's market there on Thursday and the parking, parking lot being closed off? And they their feedback was like very positive because they don't mind it. They yeah, they're not saying they don't mind. They're actually seeing more traffic so to their store. People are using that oh, area okay. more frequently. Yeah. There's just more bodies in the yeah. area. Yeah, it's creating more foot yeah. traffic. For they're sure. seeing more customers. They pick up the produce and they for you asking that they <laughs> pick up their tomatoes That's and your last <laughs> member work, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, I mean, and the only um, negative feedback they said they received was uh, sometimes from the more elderly um, mm -hmm. residents, they don't feel safe crossing the Haverford Avenue. Yeah. Um, but if, with this improvement and this plan, that would make it a lot safer. We need the like, crosswalks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I got, there was one other thing I, and I, I don't have any kids, but I was out in the circle with my niece not too long ago. And it made me really, not being a parent, it made me really appreciate that, like, I took her into the middle of the circle because mm -hmm. I was like, it's the only spot for this little kid to run around. And then the moment I 
put her nice. down, I was like, oh my god. The, every direction she goes, she's potentially going to get clobbered by me. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's dangerous. Yeah. It, was, it was not. Um, um, yeah. Speaking of the elderly across the street, um, I'm, I'm curious, this might not be a park issue, again, this is a, a um, traffic study issue, but putting in flashing, crossing signs, like they put over. I so agree with that. Just, just there might be really helpful, because people they, they creep out there, and it's hard to see them. And it's the it's actually hard to see in this plan, but this uh, plan actually has the whole street raised. Oh, yeah, um, if you, right, oh, I missed that. Right. Um, if, you go, if you go up, well, some of your cars are going to slow down. Yeah, I just right. want to gotcha. the yeah. 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 pedestrian I missed that part now. Instead of a vehicular area. Back in the right gray area, the street. So you can see, like, currently when you're going, you're crossing the street, you know, like, you're going from the side. It, it's like you don't really have anything to protect you with, when you're coming out to cross and it's hard to see people. But with this, see how it's, like, extended into the road the um, where they're crossing? So it would be a lot more... It would stick out a lot more and be safer for people. But yeah, also having like flashing signals would be ideal and that make it even better. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Can, what are the, in the middle where the parking spaces used to be, those umbrellas? In the, yeah, uh, I have them as like examples. I don't yeah. think they were meant to be like stationary. That's just yeah. Maybe places for people to sit. So it'll be open. There, there will be nothing but, uh, open space there to be utilized for different things, right? Correct. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think it's meant to be a flexible space. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, this is, don't, this is just to lighten the moment, Dennis. You know, I love you. I, and if we can't get pickleball on the t basketball courts, we could do pop-up pickle right there in Station Circle. <laughs> I think that's a wonderful idea, Dennis. I was thinking that for you, you yeah. could walk into the state store and open your bottle of wine and sit under one of the umbrellas, too. That's no, right. no, we, but it would no, it would be great. Little, I mean, a little I bottle think, of wine and play pickleball together. There we go. We got it covered. Got it covered. <laughs> they do wine tastings there, right? Yeah, they do. Once in a while at the yeah. tables, they have a taste lab. All right. Anything else that has to be said about these? So we will give feedback. I'll write something up. I'll share it with you. Share it with everybody, actually. You can log into it. And then we can um, give them that feedback so that when we see them in September, uh, they'll be a whole different week, or at least integrating more of what we've talked about. We Great. did not, do you like to add anything? We did not give you any opportunity. Um, we're we're yeah. just skate for a bits on we just came here to, to get to know you, but like we are the ones who send the presentation. So we've been working with residents from Narbert outside Albert. I mean, we use the skater, we are skaters ourselves. Yeah. And we just came here to, to connect, answer any questions. I know there are several questions that, that came up, and I think we can help with that. So whatever you need. But okay. We are old skaters. <laughs> We are the older skating. The older demographic. We are the ones that are happy when we're out of work. We're the ones that attend the skate park. All the other old guys. So there's, there's a whole group of old gentlemen who skate park. Yeah. Living in the men's skate park. Totally not. All right, then. I'm going to call it 829. We're adjourned. All right. Take care. Great Thank to you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks for joining.